When most people hear the phrase Patrick Grady Game Banana, you don't really think of much, do you? I mean, you shouldn't. It just sounds like a normal name. I mean, some bells might go off when you hear the phrase Game Banana, but besides from that, you should be completely clueless to who that is. But if you go up to an FNF fan and ask the same exact phrase, you're probably going to be met with an angry response. Why is that? Well, I'm here to tell you. Game Banana is a site made for users to upload their mods of certain games, or allow users to download said mods of said certain games. And they're probably the most popular site in their field of work. Well, besides Steam Workshop, but that's kind of a whole different story. But that's besides the point. I myself remember waiting hours to download the full Tricky mod, are waiting for the versus Edeled mod to drop. They said, and so, and then they don't announce that they're pushing it back an hour after I go live. I am. I need a female to fart in my mouth. This site is prone to having some of the best mods ever available to download. So I can't really understand how such a popular and beloved site can have such a completely dense thought process when it actually comes to running their site. something that's basically required everywhere in the world. You don't want to follow the rules, you receive a ban, or you go to jail. Game Banana's rules are fairly simple. Not too hard to comprehend, right? Well, you might be wrong. But let's dive deeper. Back to a golden age of 2020. The riots were over, people were getting used to COVID, the world was finally starting to slow down. But if you were a user of a semi-small and up-and-coming site called Game Banana, you would have had a whole different story. That date was October the 5th, 2020. Member Reverend V92, Treasure Game File. Everyone was. Well, Game Banana tried some of the mods I made because it was against the rules. I don't know what. Interesting rule. I'm sorry to those who. Can you please? People were angry. A lot of by the way, before we get into this part, I'd like to say that this is mostly he said, she said. Seeing as this happened almost a year ago, no one has concrete screenshots of Discord DMs or other stuff like that. By the way, I'm also going to read off the way Patrick describes the set of events, then read the way that Tom describes everything happening, so that way you can get both sides of the story. Patrick Grady's story goes as the following. Personalized mods were banned and had been banned since the site was originally launched. He trashed some submissions in accordance with the long-standing site rule because some low-level managers had been approving them without even knowing this was a rule. People threw a fit and Tom restored them and changed multiple site rules, blamed Patrick for it, and then directed all fall at Patrick. Which, I mean, we do see Tom go back on the rule, changing it up to where now if you are famous enough, you can do whatever you want, but all the little guys just completely fu- which, like, Tom, buddy, why have it to where if the mod is big enough, it doesn't really matter? It really just makes it seem like all you care about is fame and clicks, but that's just how I see it. Patrick also states the only reason why he went back and trashed the mods after they were released because a smaller admin just went in and allowed all these random mods to go through without properly viewing them first. Which is true, these mods were personalized mods, which were against the rules. Ish. We'll cover more about that when we dive into Tom's response. But alas, Game Banana was scrutinized and they quickly changed their rules. But going back to Patrick's statement, he said, blamed me for it and directed all fall at me. Which he isn't fully wrong, Tom never technically tweeted anything about the moderator just doing his job. Instead, he opted into just tweeting about how the rules are being made clear. Which, by the way, it still kind of feels confusing, to me at least. But, you know what, let's forget about all that. How did Tom feel about this when all the events went down? Well, let's find out. Hey, quick little editor's note, this isn't really a full, like, you know, set of events from Tom's point of view. This is more of just him explaining what Patrick might have done wrong. I just wanted to get that out there before anyone goes and comments, Timbo, he didn't really give a real response. Well, that's why he, I, he, yeah. Tom's story goes as the following. There is no specific rule at the time other than the rule of common sense, so we made it written after the incident. 
which basically means that Patrick should have known not to go in there and delete mods that had already been released and kind of got a following, because deleting them would just ultimately resort in backlash, which is what ultimately happened. And due to all that backlash, Tom then went in and decided to change up some rules. One of those rules being that before you go in and delete a popular mod, you have to have a discussion with other moderators, basically allowing multiple moderators to review a mod before it gets trashed. That way, if one moderator goes in and sees a certain mod that doesn't look like it follows all of Game Banana rules they can chat with other moderators and get a second opinion about it before they end up deleting a super popular mod causing all this stuff to happen again which we already know what happens next it's september the 3rd 2021 everyone's just chilling until boom bob mod's gone boom cappy's gone left and right multiple mods are being trashed by one man patrick grady Mod creators were panicking, Twitter was screaming, people wanted to know why mods that had been up on the site for multiple months were now being trashed for being low quality. Most people thought Game Banana knew that Bob Mod was supposed to look low quality, so why now all of a sudden are they going in and trashing it? People went to Game Banana to ask questions, until HiFlox tweets out this. So then, I did not want any harassment to be shown towards this person, even though they removed it, I did not want any harassment to be sent from my community, thank you. People had found their guy. Right after finding his account, they immediately went to harassing him. They found his Twitter, they found his Discord, some even found his girlfriend. If this guy had a social media account, it was found out and quickly spanned and flooded with awful comments. And then just a few hours later, things got worse. A hacker named Arch then hacked into some Game Bananas admin's account and then started mass deleting all of their mods which then caused the FNF community to go from a mid 78% panic level all the way up to 90%. People were afraid of the fact that their mod might get deleted. People frantically started gathering their stuff and proceeded to get out of there. Hundreds of mod creators started frantically porting their mods to Game Jolt. It was clear, a lot of people were scared. Game Banana quickly took to Twitter. Unfortunately, we had a bit of a blow up today with some popular mods being trashed without proper discourse. This was a mistake on our part. These mods will be untrashed shortly. We apologize to any of the creators that were affected by this. People started to relax a bit. Mod creators' tensions eased up, and they announced that their mods would stay on both Game Jolt and Game Banana. I mean, yes, there are people who still made mods exclusively on Game Jolt, but for the most part, people aren't 100% done with Game Banana. So you are most likely wondering, why did Patrick ever do such a thing? What could he have possibly been thinking? Well, let me tell you. As I said, Sketchophobia was mass approving stuff and I was giving it another look. Apparently the Bob thing, which looks like a crappy MS Paint stuff we've been trashing for years, was popular. I don't actually look at views slash downloads slash etc. They're important metrics to some, but they're not the judge of quality. See also how many times something that's an absolute train wreck makes the front page slash feature system just because it's a car crash kind of reaction. Probably have seen that before if you browse Game Banana long enough. Apparently this bop thing was in the mix. I saw a crap looking MS Paint, I either trashed it or withheld it. I don't actually know which one, honestly. After hearing that, it kind of sounds like deja vu. A moderator mass approved something and then Patrick went back and fixed it, causing a huge uproar. Now next question you're probably thinking is, didn't Tom set a rule saying that before you delete a popular mod, check with admins? So didn't Patrick just break a rule by not checking the views slash downloads and then after doing that he should have went to talk to another admin? Correct. Patrick should have gone back and talked it over with other admins before just mass trashing mods. Patrick claims that he didn't know that it was a rule, so you know, I guess we can't really blame him. So as you know, I give both sides of the story whenever I go over stuff like this. So what did Tom say about this? Unfortunately, today he broke an extremely important moderation protocol we specifically implemented after he did the same thing last year. An unsanctioned mass trash of popular work leading to a huge controversy. And let's play devil's advocate. If Patrick didn't know the rule, did he really deserve to have his moderator position taken? Well, no, he didn't. Except that's not how it went. Tom's original idea wasn't to just take away his admin powers. He originally was going to just demote him back to source GM role, but then Patrick went around and unfriended him, basically stopping Tom from DMing Patrick. Patrick says that he was just ultimately trying to space himself away from Tom because he was kind of angry, which I mean I kind of get, but I mean at the same time I can also see where Tom's coming from. Like this whole situation in of itself is super confusing. How is someone who has no idea about anything in the FNF community allowed to go in here and delete some of FNF's most popular mods? Well. This is where Seavall comes in. And this is 
Where the fuse come in too? So I asked Seval the exact same question. They replied with, "They're senior managers and junior managers." Tom was the, one of the actual mods for Game Banana. While most of us, Cade, Snow, and Smokey, were just managers of the FNF tab, and since he was a mod, he had the power of a senior manager. By the way, senior managers can just trash other mods. I always wanted to know about how Tom told their moderators about the rules. Because you can clearly see that due to poor communication, Patrick didn't even know that the for deleting a mod rule ever existed. That there's a page that Tom made on Game Banana that shows what each rule should be used for. But you know, it's not as bad as I make it seem for Game Banana. People still use their site. A lot of mod creators understood that it was just a bump in the road for them. Like Ninja Muffin himself legit told us to forgive Game Banana. I mean, like a lot of people didn't really listen to him. But still, Game Banana is making tons of reforms to change up their site, and that's amazing. I mean, the whole situation with Patrick was just a mistake blown out of the water. Neither Patrick or Game Banana deserve any of the hate that they get, and are still getting, by the way. Plus, you know what? Maybe it's good that Game Jolt was getting pretty popular. Competition is always good. It'll force Game Banana to actually do better and put in a lot more work into their website. Like BF once said, Beep bop, beep bop which translates to, I've been up against tough competition all my life. I wouldn't know how to get along without it. Wait a second, that's a Walt Disney Club!